So here we are at the fuel dock at the Annapolis Annapolis. City Marine. Annapolis. And we, the first review we're doing today is the Leopard 45. And this is going to be called the in-depth review. And the reason we've only just decided on the fact that it's going to be an in-depth review is because we can see the Leopard 45 uh, waiting to pick us up. And there's about 10 people on board. I think Leopard have very kindly sent uh, the head of engineering, the head of marketing, the head of everything, the head of chaining us to concrete blocks and throwing us into the river if we don't do well. Um, so I think this is going to be um, a fairly comprehensive review and we're going to get a lot of questions answered. Um, so um, we'll put that out to our patrons, get some questions answered, get see how it goes. And hopefully we will have some answers for you by the end of today. So it's Leopard 45 test sale day. Therese, what are we looking at in this? We are going to address some of our concerns that we highlighted in our review, which I'll link to up here. If you've not seen it already, please click that link. And primarily among them, it was the forward facing cockpit. We have concerns over the practicality of that in bigger seas, ocean crossings, that kind of thing. Is it really practical or is it just for sitting at anchor? And we also are interested to see the performance. Um, how fast can this uh, Leopard 45 sail? It's very light wind day, so that will be a real test for this catamaran. All right, enjoy this one. So as we boarded this brand new Leopard 45, our delivery skipper Calvin dropped the lines and raised the mainsail. We sailed out onto the Chesapeake Bay on a beautiful autumn day, an absolutely fantastic start to a test sail. And with the wind filling the sails, it was finally time to turn the engine off and see what this boat could do. The airs were light, we had barely five to seven knots on the open water. But the Leopard 45 performed admirably and we managed to log up to four knots sailing at 60 degrees. But the truth has not been told Cause every corner of these woods is hollow And with the autumn sun beating down on our backs it was time to turn to our WhatsApp group and ask our patrons what they wanted to ask Leopard. And what better place to start than with Calvin the delivery skipper with 20 something Atlantic crossings under his belt, he had a wealth of experience to pass on to us. So here I am at the helm of the Leopard 45 and I've just been chatting to a very friendly chap called Calvin, he's a delivery skipper for the Leopard and uh, he's been telling me all about the transatlantic crossings that he's done on all the different types of um, models that Leopard produce and uh, yeah it all sounds very very positive we're talking kind of speeds of around six to eight knots um, on a Leopard 45 and uh, yeah it sounds like that could be a really nice comfortable crossing as well so we, he reckons that uh, sailing a wind angle, realistic wind angles are anywhere between 35 and 50 degrees, which is about what you would expect from a catamaran. 35 is obviously pretty optimistic, but I think between 45 and 50 is about right. So uh, depending on wind speed, apparently. So yeah, that all sounds uh, pretty good to me, to be honest. Um, the homing position up here, we talked about it when we did the review, but now that we're actually sailing along, I can confirm that it is really brilliant. It is, I can have, I have 360 visibility. There's literally nothing that I can't see right now. Um, the sails, there's a really big window up above me. I can see the main and obviously forward, I can see the Genoa. So I've got everything to hand, um, all the lines come back here. Do all the lines come back here or do some lines go back into the cockpit? No, everything's coming. Everything comes back here, yeah. Um, brilliant. Happy days. I'm happy. It's a beautiful day. The next question was about the life raft and life raft position. And who best to ask than Frank, the Vice President of Leopard Catamarans. So another point I do want to put, we've got, uh, we've got Frank here, and it's about the life raft position. So Frank, just um, run through this life raft position for us, please. Yeah. So that's what we do like on the, on the standard boat. Some, some owners change that aftermarket. They are uh, either mounted here in the, on the bracket. Some they like to put on the roof. We don't like the roof much because usually that's the, the area that's the most dangerous if you're in heavy weather. So it's here, it's in the locker. There's a, the line is uh, hooked up to a pad eye and there's two handles, there's four handles actually, and you basically take it out. In fact, you take it on sideways 
sits here on the on the swing platform, so it takes a couple seconds here. I can't say that it's not heavy. You have to actually yank it out, and then here you can just launch it. And the line is uh, on the pad eye, so when you launch, you know you uh, you're gonna have about 10 meters of line here, and then you can yank the uh, the, you know, the line, and it opens up in the back of the boat. So the, the, my my red line is always: Can you get that life raft deployed in 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, I mean it takes maybe like you know a few seconds to put it out, and then you launch it directly here. You you can open this here, those life lines. They open up, yeah. and it goes right out. I, I do actually agree with you. I've seen. Yeah, I agree with you because I've seen life rafts that where they're that side, so you have to come in and that that and we saw one under the. So the like, so I, another thing is I think the improvement from there will be to remain in the back of the boat because this is the most stable position of the boat if you're in any kind of a trouble, uh, and that's the last resort. We also have the dinghy, of course, here. Uh, also, cats, uh, you know, they don't sink very quickly. Uh, you know, if they do, they technically they, they take a, say, a float a lot longer than the monohull. But anyway, the other option is to do it on a on a aftermarket. You can put it on a on a, a bracket here yeah. with a pin, and that's probably a little bit better than this because you can kick the pin and it goes out. To me, I'd want I, just as a monohull sailor. In, I know that cap size is so unlikely, but I would want a hydrostatic release on a bracket for offshore sailing. I think for like coastal sailing, that's that's one thing. But um, uh, the cap size is very very rare. Oh, this we know. Yeah. So uh, what can happen on the, you know the is it would be uh, you know damaging a hull like uh, hitting something at yep. sea and then those boats they uh, they can fill the, the hulls can fill with water but yep. they don't they stay afloat yep. uh, so that's a big advantage when the water if the hulls are filled on one hull the other one will, will, will serve as a, as a you know a floating will still float yep. so the boat will actually go sideways we've seen it in hurricanes you know we obviously went through Irma and we had faders in a in a in a transom where the water will come into the transom. So in that case, the boat sits a little bit that way. So it could be coming from different areas where you uh, you have a puncture in the hull. Okay. So the advantage of the cats is that they don't sink, you know. So that gives plenty of time to get prepared to uh, to do the life raft. The other thing is it's important, I think, to rehearse uh, to rehearse with the crew before going at sea and to do it several times so you know exactly what you're going to do. Yeah. I um, think, look, I think with us life rafts, it, it's, you know, it's a safety net. It's your parachute. Uh, as I said, So I last would, resort parachute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'd want it on a bracket because if the boat, heaven forbid, did invert, um, you would probably struggle to get that out of that locker. And so thanks to Frank for those insightful comments on the life raft in the Leopard 45. Now we want to have a good look at the coach roof and how easy it is to maneuver around this boat. In addition to that, we also want to give you our thoughts on that forward-facing cockpit. This is the first time we've actually used one on the water. Well, I suppose the thing, first thing we're doing on this test sail is just seeing how easy the deck is to manage. Now, these decks on this 45, they're pretty wide. Um, Handrails almost all throughout. I'd probably want something that went a little bit longer, but I don't feel unsafe. I mean, we're on a really light wind day. We've got less than 10 knots of wind and the boat is doing half wind speed. So we've got about four and a half knots and it's also very stable. So moving around the boat, I don't think it's gonna be, uh, it doesn't seem to be a problem. I probably would want handrails that actually went around this side if I ever wanted to go onto the trampolines in heavy weather. But those as an addition wouldn't be too difficult to do. So yeah, pretty happy with, with kind of the deck movement. Um, We'll move on to kind of like looking around the trampolines and how that all works out. Um, yeah, pretty happy. So I was interrogating Calvin, Calvin, our lovely skipper, um, about this forward-facing cockpit. Obviously, it was something that we were quite critical of um, in our review. Maybe not critical, just had a few question marks. Um, so first thing I asked him about drainage, he said it drained immediately. And the second thing I asked him was about performance. You know, it doesn't look to the untrained eye and possibly even to the trained eye, like it would be very aerodynamic. It looks like it would really um, hinder performance. And Calvin, who has sailed not only these newer lepers that have the forward facing cockpit, but also many of the older lepers that had the um, like louvered windows, he said that there was no discernible difference in performance. He did admit that perhaps if you were really looking closely at the numbers, you might there might be a difference in performance. It might be a little bit less performance um, based just the, with the forward facing cockpit. But he said that for him, it's, he hasn't discerned any difference himself. And I guess, you know, for the average cruiser, 
who wanted a cruising catamaran buying a leopard they're not going to care about you know 0.2 of a knot of boat speed so i think that that really speaks for itself the forward facing cockpit we've discussed the the door and whether the door is strong and sturdy enough to withstand any waves hitting it nick is very happy with the state of the door and the strength of the door to my untrained eye it looks pretty you know solid the cockpit drains quickly it doesn't really hinder performance i mean i'm kind of at the point where it's like personal choice if you like the forward facing cockpit i can't see any reason not to not to get a leopard catamaran so i guess our criticisms you know whether or not it's to our taste is a different uh is a different thing but from a safety and a performance point of view it doesn't seem to be a problem as we continued our test sale with leopard we were able to ask them the questions that you put to them they weren't given the questions in advance and the answers that we got were quite revealing. Okay, so question one, we're gonna ask, uh, first we're gonna start with Calvin, who has done how many ocean crossings in leopard catamarans? 22. 22 ocean crossings, that is a commitment to ocean sailing. Okay, so how suitable do you find these boats for long distance passages? More specifically, and this is the question we've been asked a lot and we have questioned, that forward facing cockpit. Right, so, you would think that it's actually going to slow you down maybe, like in performance and things like that. The fact is that like even with this being a luxury catamaran, you know, tweaking out extra two knots of speed because of a forward-facing uh, cockpit is going to change that, and it's, it's not really at all. Mm -hmm. So, and even when it comes to like the ocean itself, like if you think that, you know, it's going to come in there and it's going to flood up, it actually, you know, drains fairly quickly. Yep. You know. So, it, so the drain time is, you know, nothing you need to worry about, nothing to be concerned I've about. I've never experienced it where I've had to be concerned about it. I've had water come in and go out just as quick. Fantastic. Yeah. And so, obviously, after twenty-three crossings in hugely variable conditions, what would you say that the average cruising speed for a couple short-handed doing this would be over over an Atlantic crossing or Pacific crossing? A good average speed, like you know, well. Trade wind sailing, yep. you know, you're probably going to be doing something between six to eight knots. Six to eight knots, and that, yeah. that's good. I, yeah. I like it when I get answers like that because occasionally we get 12 knots and we're like, yeah, really. But no, that, that's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, Katie, um, Leopard, the brand, tell us. So, the popularity of Leopard has grown so quickly. Um, I started with the company about six years ago, and we were building more moorings and sun sail boats than we were leopard boats, but because the demand for private ownership has become so high, we're now building just as many leopards as we are charter boats. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the brand awareness, like we've done a big push on getting onto YouTube, putting out good content. Um, Facebook, you know, our followers have doubled in size in the last two years. Um, so, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And Frank, the pillars of Leopard, what does Leopard mean as the VP of this company? Tell us in your words. Yeah, so first I think the uh, <clears throat> uh, what's am amazed me is when we started selling the boats under the Leopard brand, mm -hmm. we never thought it would become such a global thing. Yeah. Uh, we were just trying to uh, build the best possible boats for the Moines fleet. Mm -hmm. So that was in 1996. So I was involved with Robertson and Kane from the very beginning. My boss at the time uh, wrote the uh, brief to come up with the first boat. And, uh, and we developed boats for, for the, the charter fleet. And what's amazing is all the things that we've done on this boat, and the pillars being a robust boat for mm -hmm. sure, uh, a, a safe boat to go offshore in any kind of conditions, mm -hmm. Uh, of a convivial boat, in other words, uh, you know, you have very nice living areas. Here, you know, here you can see it's open right now, it's a nice day. You have a full cockpit with a full table there. Uh, and convivial being that we keep the groups together. So the ham station is in the cockpit, which is very important for us, uh, for safety reasons, because, you know, in heavy weather you protect it in the ham station. Uh, the hot top comes standard, we uh, enclose it. And behind the bulkhead, you have a much better protection at sea, and you can see what's going on. And I, I'm a typical kind of sailor, I'm a bit over paranoid. You know, I have family, I have kids, so I want to be able to always see what's going on in the boat. Okay. Uh, the other things were basically ease of maintenance, which is access to the systems, uh, being able to uh, turn around the boat quickly, which the owners actually end up really liking this because they have to maintain their own boat. 
and and then find the best uh, compromise between volume and performance. And the way we accomplish it, as you can say, you know, we're in light air and eight knots of wind, we do four and a half, five knots of boat mm -hmm. speed. So they they cruising boats. Uh, they're not race boats, but they, they they sell well. The reason they sell well is because we have very narrow hulls, and from the very start, and now other builders are doing it, is uh, the volume is above the waterline with, mm -hmm. a, with a step. And we, are, we have a more traditional rig. We maintain our overlapping genoa, because those catamarans, they like to be powered, particularly on the bow. So when you get into a chop or you know a bigger, a bit more seas, it's good to power the bow of the boat. It's comfort, it's less hobby horsing. And then uh, in light air, it sells better with uh, with the Genoa, and we have big four batten mains still. Uh, so even though they are boats for uh, you know liveaboard for charter, uh, we have the same way on all the boats, and they, they they sell well. So that's basically it. And I I think the input on that is coming from Alex Simonis, the naval architect. Okay. And then the last bit, I think, is very particular to us. Is we're a very small group. Mm -hmm. You know, it's John Robertson. It's Alex Simonis is a design team at Robertson and Kane and us. And very quickly we managed to develop boats. And because we operate 500 plus boats at any time mm -hmm. uh, for the past 25, 30 years, uh, we really understand uh, what works and what doesn't work uh, in terms of living areas, but also systems, um, down to pumps, you know, choice of generator, air, con air conditioning. Yeah. So it's, it's the history and how long you've been making these catalogs that gives you the, the competitive edge because you know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, and also that's the every day. Today, uh, you know, every day we find, you know, ways to improve systems okay. and, and con continuously make the, the, the product reliable. And uh, the best thing to do is to, you know, if you operate 500 boats doing 25 weeks of, of charter every, every year, and you, we pay for the maintenance on behalf of the owners, we understand well what system works, what system doesn't work. Perfect, thank you. Okay, listen, those are the easy questions. Um, we've <laughs> gone to our patrons to ask uh, questions to you, and we're gonna get these, these quick fire questions. Um, so, let's start with Rhino's question. So, uh, Rhino's question, um, I'll leave it to any of you to answer this. The cockpit door, have you had any failures or leakages in those cockpit, those forward-facing cockpit doors. Honestly, yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. And we have. And is that gasket failure? Is it? Is it? It's usually the gasket failure. Yeah. Okay. But they can most of the time be replaced fairly easily. Okay. And is that gasket something you could change yourself, or does it need to be sent back to a, a you know? Well, if you're the type of person that's hands-on, you probably okay. do it yourself. So, would you recommend that if you're going offshore in one of these boats, you carry a spare gasket? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so that, that's that, so an offshore spares kit gasket something we take. Okay, thank, thanks for being honest. Um, Katie, anything you want to add to that? Um, You're fired. <laughs> 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 that's the last time you were first. No, thank you for that. That's, that's really good. Okay, fantastic. Um, so another question, this is from Patrick. Patrick asks, the hard top over the front seating area is large and unsupported. Can two people stand in the front edge and work on the sails safely without breaking it? It's quite a long cantilever distance. Anyone got anything to say on that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's not a problem. Okay, no. fantastic. So thank you to that. Um, so uh, a question here from Tony um, is about wind speed. So really, um, you can expect this boat to perform um, in just let's run through a couple of winds. So in light airs with a good. Uh, you know, with, with a good code zero. I know we don't have the code zero on today. Right. What can you expect? Kind of like you can make hull speed. Yeah, I mean, with the code zero, you know, the light here, like maybe like a day like today, we yep. could probably do quite easily like nine knots. Nine knots. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And then obviously you've got reefs. So okay, so okay, so can I add something on this? Because uh, the uh, on the on the we have actually here two. Uh, Two sails. We have the what we call the Code Zero. In fact, is a, a heavier sail. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big Genoa, if you like. Yep. And because we have tracks on the roof from the, the regular Genoa, yep. we can you can fly a, a, a code a, a true Code Zero, which is you can sheet mm -hmm. on the outside, or you can also sheet uh, in the inside. So that's a more versatile sail. You can use it for a lot more uh, wind angles yep. from 60 all the way down to 120. And then of course we can do a big code D, which is a big downwind cell, much lighter that will that will be sheeted on the outside. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have the tracks standard on that boat, 
we gives the ability to uh, in light air to carry a big genoa, in other words, a big cell to go all the way to even upwind. Fantastic. I've got um, a question from Elliot here, which is a long question. It's going to be a long answer. So he says, house battery systems, um, how, pan how power hungry are they in relation to the size of the house batteries? Do you do all gas cooking or can you have specified electric? Um, so let's just start with that one. So can you have, uh, can you go with a lithium battery set up on this boat? Um, and can you put like induction hot rather than gas? Is that an option that you... Well, the, uh, the induction uh, would be aftermarket. We don't offer it the factory. Okay. So we do it aftermarket. The lithium, yes, we can do lithium. Okay, the next part of his question is, uh, <coughs> is, is, the, is a generator or solar part of a standard package or is it uh, something you have to specify afterwards? So when you buy a boat, you have to add the generator as part of the extra switch. Yeah, it's an option. It's you an option. You buy the, the, the genset and then panels. You can have, you know, two, four, six panels. Okay, fantastic. Um, and the, the same question is, it, I think he's asking about what this, what comes as standard. So the next, the last part of his question is motorized winches. That's an, an optional extra um, after. Uh, we have uh, two standard electric, and then one is uh, is an option. Okay, so okay, two standard electric. That that, that I did not know. Fantastic. Um, yes, I think so. Fantastic. So, um, a couple of things that spring to mind now. Um, so that we do get a lot of talk about and really getting uh, Leopard, uh, you know, the VP of the company, and someone that sold um, so many Atlantic crosses, is to do with bridge deck clearance <coughs> and slamming. Now, we have been very, very clear that slamming is not directly uh, linked to bridge deck clearance. There's the, the shape of the nacelle and other factors. So, firstly, to you, Calvin, bridge deck clearance. How, how badly or does if at all, does this boat slam? Um, well, basically, it's it's a catamaran, so it's going to get a little bit of slamming, depending obviously on on the you know state of the ocean. Yep. Um, I wouldn't say it's severe. I find it on like the smaller boats, you know, where I've experienced it a lot more. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but yep. I don't think is that as intense as people would you know think. Yeah, because it's a cat. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that. And Frank, one question I've got for you, um, which is a technical question. Um, the 45, the payload that you can apply, you can add to this boat for cruisers, because obviously as cruisers we want, you know, we've got, you know, this is our life. Do you know off the top of your head the payload? Uh oh, I have to look it up. <laughs> top of my head. Uh, yes, it's, um, the payload is uh, 4,600 kilos, which is 10,000. 141 Okay, you can apply to the boat. Fantastic. So is there anything else you want to think about asking one of you? No. Okay, All so, of the things that we wanted to know. Yeah. But, and so uh, one question that um, I gave to Frank, obviously this is a 2020 Leopard model. Um, anything in the future that you're willing to kind of disclose to YouTube that you want to bring into Leopard um, as a brand or as within the Catamaran range? So on this particular boat, we have that big refresh with it, which is the Allen Berth, uh, you know, uh, aft cab, aft uh, bed. The cabins are bigger. We opened up the, the bucket more, mm -hmm. added a window. We have uh, digital monitoring standard. Yep. Uh, we have those much uh, really nice cushions, backrest and uh, bottom, mm -hmm. uh, here and there. And then in a, the next model, uh, we have we can have uh, the lounge on this boat as well. Okay, perfect. Like the 50. Yeah. As far as the whole range, yeah, we always develop you know, yeah. a new products. So we're working, we usually have a three to three and a half year um, you know, horizon mm -hmm. on, on products. So we have you know, always uh, renewal. What we're doing now is just launch a power cat, which is, you know, yeah. we also do power boats. Uh, and then yes, there's going to be new models coming, of course. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and one thing I'm going to add, because we had um, a couple of people, uh, Leopard owners, say that the seats here, especially in a couple of boats that we visited, were not particularly comfortable, that this part, the actual length of the seat was too small. Um, and I would say that these are actually really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever issue there was with those, that people are like, oh, these seats yeah, are... No, yeah, we increased that all yeah. the time. Might so the only models, models, yeah, the the models were a little right. shorter, so yeah. We, yeah. we are aware of that. Yeah. So the idea here is to be able to, to lounge. Yeah. And that's why we have those folding tables, because of the can. You can lounge around the table and we can open it up and also dine around. Thank so. you. Well, thank you. So, thank you to Calvin, thank you to Katie, and thank you to Frank. And hope that's answered as many questions as uh, we could think of today on this test sail. We're obviously going to come back with more test sails of different boats and we'll obviously come back to you. So, any questions you do have, either for the next boats that we're going to be uh, test sailing or that we can put to these three lovely people in the future via email, let us know.
Smile.